Lord, thank you for this beautiful day that yes, you bless us with, Lord. Mm -hmm. Lord, thank you for bringing us all here this morning. Thank you, Father. Lord, we know that you have a word for us. Yes, we know that you are numbering our steps. And Lord, we know that you're coming back soon. Yes. So Lord, we just thank you for that. We just uh, thank you for this, uh, the ability to give back to thank your kingdom. You, Lord. We praise you. We glorify you. Honor you. And Lord, it's all about what your son has done for us. And Lord, we thank you and praise you. In Jesus' sweet and holy name we pray. And all of us say, Amen. Amen. Amen.
in that church to the gold given a two hundred fifty dollar fine. And it went back and had church again and made it five hundred dollars. <laughs> you can fact check this on Facebook. I don't care. It's true. It was on the news. Preacher was telling about it. Went back and had church again and raised up to a thousand dollars. Last I heard, it got up to fifty-two thousand dollars to find for having church. No doubt it's going to be higher than that. God is awesome in this place. He's awesome. We need to worship God like nice. this may be our very last time that we're together together. You say, Charlie, they didn't tell us we can't have church. They already told us one time. When they opened up the liquor store, they said, if they need to go to the liquor store, they don't go to church. That's right. That's what they we did. need to take hold yeah. of what God has given us. Yeah. We need to send the praise to Him that they just, when they drive by the interstate, Something's going on over there at that church. I just felt goosebumps go all over me that night. When they go down the road, you there say, go. I'm going to ask them to take another course of that. God is awesome. No matter what we're hanging on to, That's right. it ain't no good. Worldly things ain't no good. Oh. Only things, no matter when we lay down and close our eyes, is what we've done for Jesus Christ. That's all. Amen. God is awesome in this place yeah. and everywhere in this world. It belongs to Him. It don't belong to nobody else. That's it right. belongs to God and He's going to prove it to them. Yeah. Praise His holy name. Hallelujah. Good word.
Amen. Good morning. See us.
he might be able to deceive us. Right. And we don't want that to happen. We don't want that to happen. So I think God's bringing me, maybe it's just me, maybe I'm preaching to me, and you just enjoy the sermon he's preaching to me. <laughs> but I think he's just pretty much wanting me to know that the things that, that maybe I have thought I knew, that perhaps I didn't really know as much as I thought I did. So, so when I began to talk about the things like we talked about the baptism, and, and today we're going to talk about faith, what faith really is. If I were to ask you if you had faith, you're going to go, oh, yeah, I got faith, I got faith. Well, what is faith? Well, <clears throat> I think we're going to find out what it is. I think we may know, but we may not know. <laughs> so I think that's something we're going to talk about. If you'll turn to 2 Timothy, the letter that Paul wrote to Tim, I call him Tim, to Timothy. Turn to the second epistle he wrote to Timothy and stand if you are able. We're going to honor God and read his word together. In the very first chapter of this second letter, I want to read verses 1 through 5. And we're going to talk about faith. We're going to talk about faith. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God, according to the promise of life, which is in Christ Jesus, to Timothy, a beloved son, grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father, Christ Jesus our Lord. I thank God, whom I serve with a pure conscience, as my forefathers did, as without ceasing I remember you in my prayers, night and day, greatly desiring to see you, being mindful of your tears, that I might be filled with joy. When I call to remembrance the genuine faith, everybody say genuine faith. Genuine. When I call to remembrance the genuine faith that is in you, which dwelt first in your grandmother, Lois, then your mother, Eunice, and I am persuaded is in you also. Therefore, I remind you to stir up the gift of God, which is in you through the laying on of my hands. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and a sound mind. I'm going to read verse 6 again. Therefore, I remind you, Timothy, I want you to remember to stir up the gift of God, which is the genuine faith, Timothy, <laughs> that dwelt in your mom and grandmother. Stir up that gift, which is in you, through the laying on of my hands. May the laying on of my hands, Paul said, bring back to your remembrance what faith really is. Father, we thank you today. Thank you for this wonderful worship session. Thank you for the time that we're able to come into your presence in song and in prayer and in giving. And now comes the time that we sit at your feet, Jesus, as we look into this word. This is the good thing that we all need. So I pray, Holy Spirit, as you, as you inspire upon the apostle and upon Timothy, Father, I pray that you inspire us, open this word up in our hearts, not just our minds. Father, I rebuke the old devil. I come against him because I know that he has one goal in mind, and that is to keep us from hearing your word. So I just pray right now that that doesn't happen, that this seed would fall on productive parts, that we would be able to absorb it and be better disciples and better evangelists. We'll give you the thanks and the praise for it all. Thank you, Jesus, for what you did for us on that cross. We're here to worship you. In your name I say it, Lord Jesus. The saints would say, we love you, Lord. Love you, Lord. Amen and amen. 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 Look around, smile at somebody. Hey, you know, you can even holler at them and say, hey, glad to see you. <laughs> Service this morning. Good, good that you're able to be with us. <clears throat> glad that you're able to be in service this morning. Well, I want to talk about genuine faith. Genuine faith. We're, we're in a day where there, there are so much things that are not genuine, aren't we? Man, I am telling you, it, there, is, there is so much hypocrisy in the world today that you just quit counting, don't you? You just quit paying attention to it and, 
And you know the danger of that is that when you when you see so so much false truth and you hear so many false teachings, if if we're not really careful, then we won't know real teaching when we hear it because we'll be moved to the point that we're we just think everything that we hear is not really is not really sincere or not really true. Let me say this by the authority of this book. This word is sincere, and this word is true. And what God says to us in this word, we can take that to heaven with us. Because this word is not hypocritical, and this word is as sincere as it can be in regards to our souls. I have found out that, that God cares more about my soul than I did at one point in my life. And that's what this word has shown me. So when I begin to dive into this thing, and I begin to hear the truths of this word coming, <clears throat> coming out into my life, sometimes I have to change the way I think. And sometimes I have to actually tell myself, well, I was wrong. Anybody ever do that? Yeah, you all tell yourself all the time I was wrong, right? <laughs> No, it's a fact. It's a fact that I have to. I have to just admit sometimes. Well, this is what I thought. Well, where did I get that thought from? Well, somebody told it to me. You know, somehow it was manufactured, or somehow it came up, and I just grabbed onto that. We're <clears throat> we're in a time in America where people are grabbing on to things that that they want to hold on to, whether it's true or not. Because somehow it gives them some security or it gives them some comfort. And when we talk about faith within the Christian community, we, we all pretty much think we know what we're talking about. Well, let's just be sure that we do. Faith, as Paul told Timothy, the genuine faith, which means that there's other faith out there, and he said the genuine faith, Timothy, is that which I want you to, to stir up that I know is in you. Timothy was left at Ephesus as an interim pastor for that church that Paul had founded. Paul had been put in prison. Timothy had, he had the task of, of getting this church not only back in line as he did all the churches, but as a young man, his task was to keep this church in the genuine faith that established this church. Because as time had went on, they had moved on to different doctrines, to different teachings, even to the point that Paul had, had told Timothy at one point, they heap unto themselves teachers and engineers, is, is what they do. And he said, Timothy, it starts with you. If you don't recognize the genuine faith, you're certainly not going to be able to teach it to anybody. And you're certainly not going to be able to hold on to that when it comes down to, as Vernon McGee say, the rubber meets the road. We're in a time in, in world history and in society, as Sarah just said here, that God is, is going to pour out his Holy Spirit because he's not going to leave his people without knowledge and he's not going to leave his people without warning. He has given it to us. He is bringing it to us. He is wanting us to understand it. It is our job to hold on to it. It is our job to receive that. And if we don't, if we don't, then we're going to be pushed off course, and then we're just going to have to be on our own in trying to figure out what's true and what's not true. But I thank God that's not what we have to do. He said, Timothy, stir up that genuine faith that I know is in you. The word genuine means unfeigned, it means sincere, it means unhypocritical. Unhypocritical. Paul could have put that there. He, you know, the English translators could have used that word if it would have been right. They could have said, you know, I want to remind you, bring back to your remembrance the unhypocritical faith that's in you. I want you to stir that up. Well, if faith can be unhypocritical, I guess there can also be hypocritical faith. 
And hypocritical faith is faith that acts like faith. The word hypocrite means actor. Now, if I were to ask you, well, what's the definition of faith? Well, you Bible scholars are going to say Hebrews chapter 11, verses 1 and 2. That's the definition of faith. All right, let's look at it. Hebrews 11, 1 and 2. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For by it, by faith, by it the elders obtain a good testimony. And the elders being the forefathers of the church who came before us. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. That's what faith is. What? <laughs> what? I forgot to know. You're going to have to get a little more simple here in bringing out what faith really is to me because now I have the technical term. I have the lawyer term. But listen, you don't have to put this on the bottom shelf so I can get a hold of it and know exactly what it is that I'm talking about here. Well, let's see if we can do that. Faith is the substance. Faith is not made up of things. The word substance is foundation. A foundation is what a substance really means. If, if you want to get a picture of what that word actually is, the next time you go across a bridge on the interstate, think about that pillar that's holding you up along with those six tractor trailers beside that. <laughs> you ever give any thought to that? You probably don't. It's scared you to death. When I stopped on the bridge at Fort Chisholm, these two or three trucks stopped with me. I'm looking down on that interstate hoping there ain't no cars coming. Because that, that pillar, that bridge pillar that's supporting all that, that's substance. That's substance. That's what that word means. So if faith is substance, then faith supports something. Faith upholds something. There is something that I can stand on or build on that's going to hold me and going to support me. Now, you don't want to go across a bridge with a hypocritical bridge pillar. You want it to be a real bridge pillar. You want to make sure that when they put that thing together, it's the real thing and not just the looks. If you put styrofoam up there and paint it to look like concrete, you, you, ain't going to, you ain't going to be on it long. And that's what Paul was trying to get across to Timothy. He knew that Timothy knew what faith was genuinely. He knew that Timothy understood that it was faith that had brought him to this point, but now he wanted him to know it is faith that keeps you at that point. Faith is the foundation. It is not just the, the substance. And it is the hope. It's the hope that we have things hoped for. Paul said hope that is seen is not really hope at all. And, and you know what he means by that. Hope and wishing is two different things. Two different things. We get them mixed up sometimes. Wishing is, is our own personal way of wanting something out of the way. That's what wishing is. And sometimes we'll use the word hope in place of that by saying, well, I hope this happens, or I hope that really what you're doing is you're wishing, you're wishing it's going to happen the way you want it to happen. That's not what hope is. That's not what the Bible teaches hope is. You know what, you know what hope is? Hope is an expectation of the promise given by someone to be able to keep it. I don't know if I can say that again or not. Mm -hmm. I ain't got it on here. <laughs> hope is the expectation of someone who has given you a promise and you expect them to keep that promise because they had the ability to keep that promise. I might promise you something, but I'm not able to keep. 
He even sincerely, I might promise you something, but circumstances may arise that I can't control and fulfill that promise. Church, that will never happen with God. That will never happen with God. There will never be a circumstance that will keep him from fulfilling this promise that he has given me of eternal life. Amen. Cancer will not stop him from giving me eternal life. No. Yeah, terrorism will not stop him from giving me eternal life. If, if the earth should pass away, his word will never pass away. Nothing can stop him from giving me the eternal life that he has promised me through Jesus Christ. Amen. Nothing will stop him. That's the hope that I have. The hope that I have is not, well, I, I hope I'm saved. No, that's wishing. The hope that I have is I am saved. I'm expecting him to come because I know he has the ability to come and he will do what he said he will do. That is my hope. That's what hope is. But now, faith, faith is the foundation of that hope. Faith is what causes me to have that hope. It's already there. It's already been given. But it is the faith that causes me to walk out over that bridge pillar. It's the faith that supports me in my hope. I, I'm, not just, I'm not just guessing this is going to happen. I'm not just taking a chance with my soul. When I gave it to Christ, I trust him with it. Oh, did I say trust? That's what faith is, guys. Faith is trust. Chapter 11 in Hebrews gives example after example of those whose faith was in God, but really it was their trust is what was actually in God. They trusted God not only to do what he said he would do, but to be able to do what he said he would do. Then, you know, the writer of Hebrews said, those who come to God must first believe that he is. Don't stop with he is. Must first believe that he is a rewarder of those who are able. If I'm going to believe in God, I'm going to believe he's going to save me. If I come to him, Charlie, I'm going to believe he's going to save me. If I don't believe he's going to save me, there's really no use to believe in him. That's right. what, what's, what's the use? If I'm doomed and he's, he's God, if I don't believe he can save me, if I don't believe he will save me, there's no use in coming to him. But I come to him because I know that he can save me, and I know that he will save me, if I am willing Stir up that gift of hope, that gift of trust, that gift of faith that he has put in me. He names people in that chapter. Started with Abel. Abel and Enoch and Noah and Sarah and Abraham, Moses, Joseph, Jacob, Rahab, Gideon, Samson, David. And he lists that time will not allow him. To write about the rest of them who were who were hidden in caves, who were desolate, who were killed, who were sawn Amen. in two Amen. because they trusted God for something better. They trusted God for something better, the writer of Hebrews said. Faith, faith is taking God at his word. That's what faith is. Well, I've got faith. Amen. Then you take God at his word. You take God at his word. That's what faith really is. That's what faith actually is. Jesus said some people had great faith and at times the disciples had little faith. Didn't he? When you think of it in the context of a substance, if you think that faith is 
is something that you can have a whole lot of or just a little bit of. You don't understand faith. Jesus once compared faith as a mustard seed to a mountain. And people misunderstood his analogy. People took literally what he said in regards to giving an example of what we call mustard seed faith and moving mountains, somehow people began to believe that they had the power to move mountains. You ever try to move a mountain by yourself? I'll give you a chance. Go out here on the parking lot and speak to that one over there. That big tower sits on it. I'll wait on you. Go out there in the parking lot, look at that mountain, that tower, and say, be lifted up and be thrown the new river. Let's see if it happens. Let's see if it happens. How many believe it would happen if you did that? Ain't hey, nobody. <laughs> well, you know, I'm going to have to say that we all ain't got no faith. No, you do have faith. You just don't understand what faith really is because someone has led you to believe that it is something different than the Bible tells us that it is. Faith is not a force. That, that we can control. That, that's in Star Wars. The force be with you, that's a movie. Faith is not a force that, that you're able to control. That's not what faith is. Faith is taking God and his word. That's not a force. That's a choice. That's a choice. That's not a force. You, 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 don't, you don't have a choice to take him at his word or not. Either you take him at his word or you don't. That's not a force to be reckoned with. Jesus said some had great faith, some disciples had little faith. He compared it to that. What he was trying to tell us is, is there are those who believe that God is able to move a mountain if he wants to. Now, how many believe God can move that mountain? Amen. Amen. Yeah. Amen. See, if God decided to pull that mountain up, and if God decided to put it in the new river, if that's where he wants it, it will happen. Yes. It will happen. Yes. That is the faith that Jesus was trying to teach. Those who had the great faith, those who, those who Trust him fully. There's great faith and there's little faith. There are those who believe that God can lift that mountain and move it. There are those who believe that. But then there are those who would say, well, I don't know if he can or not. Now, well, how'd that come about? Because he kept telling them, the Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of men, and they will eventually kill him. But on the third day, he will rise again. And there were some who would say, I can't wait to see that. But then there were some who would say, I don't know. That's never happened. We've never seen anybody come back from the dead like that. We haven't seen it. Well, he went on the show on how it works. He raised daughter, he raised Jairus' daughter, he raised Lazarus. He went into the funeral in May and he got the boy out of the box and gave him back to his mama. He showed him that he, he showed us that he's able to do that. But still there are those who are a little faith the other. I don't know if you can go back from the dead or not. Huh? The Pharisees walked in front of the cross and said, You saved others, save yourself. They had no faith. They had no faith. Their hope was not in Jesus. Their, their hope was not built on nothing less. Their, their hope was on that only which they could see. They didn't take Jesus at his word. Right. They, they just believed what they wanted to in regards to what he said. No faith, little faith, great faith. Didn't happen. That's what faith is. Now, <clears throat> if, if we know what faith is, Let's talk about what faith ain't. That's, that's not correct in English, teachers. <laughs> what faith is not. Let's talk about what faith is not. <clears throat> it's not a force, as I've said, that can be controlled. 
about us in any particular way. The only regards to us in faith is either we have it or we don't. In, in faith in the sense we either believe and trust in God that he can do what he said he will do or we don't. That's the choice we have in regards to faith. If it is faith, if it is faith, when the lady who, who had the issue of blood came to Christ and she touched his garment and she was healed and Jesus said what to her? Your, your faith has healed you. You know there's people that take that scripture and build upon it and they think that if you get sick or they think that you have a, a disease or they think that you have cancer, or they think you have a, an ailment, or they, you just don't have enough faith. You just don't have enough faith. Oh, really? Well, if it was one, the woman's faith, if, if faith was something she had to heal her, why did she have to come to Jesus? Boy, that got quiet. If, if it was the woman's Faith that healed her, why did she have to press through the crowd to touch the Savior? You know why? <clears throat> she believed that Jesus could heal her. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. <clears throat> I believe these allergies ain't going to get me. <laughs> she believed that Jesus could heal her. <clears throat> if I can only touch his garment, she said. <clears throat> if I can only get close enough to where I can just touch him, I'll be healed. And Jesus said, your faith has healed you. Well, put that together, guys. Let me rephrase that for you. It is your trust in me that caused you to be healed, lady. If she didn't need him, if faith is all she needed, why come to Jesus? The centurion, Jairus, that came to her in the crowd that very day, and he healed her, and said, you've got to come to my house. My daughter's dying. You've got to come and heal my daughter. you got to do that. And Jesus said, don't worry. Just believe. Just believe. Well, if you're going to just believe, why'd you ever leave home? If you can believe she's going to be better, why come to Jesus? If you can do it, why do you need him? He came to Jesus, and Jesus said, I'll be with you. Only after he had a conversation with this lady. And then when he got there, the girl died. And the people said, what people always say, too late now. It's too late now. She's not dead. Didn't worry Jesus. <clears throat> Jesus says she ain't dead. She's asleep. They laughed him to scorn. That's a King James word for you. They laughed and they mocked him. They said, this guy certainly ain't no doctor. He don't know when somebody's dead. Jesus <laughs> went in there and said, little girl, get up. <clears throat> because Jairus knew that he had the power to do that if he wanted to. If Jairus did not think he had the power to do that, he would never went and got it. But he went and got it. Because he said, I know you can do it. Jesus said, just believe. She'll be all right. She was all right because Jairus didn't say, forget it. Jairus said, come on anyway. Come on anyway. That's what faith is. Pharisees didn't have any. They didn't take him at his word. Faith takes God in his word, even if you don't understand the present situation and the current circumstance. Faith, faith, Paul told Timothy, Timothy, you're in a mess of faith. You're young, these people aren't respecting you. He told them, well, everybody despised your youth, but well, they did anyway. He said, you're, you're young, and you're teaching this message, and you've got those who don't believe it, and they're going to be coming against you. And there's some smart people there in that church, no doubt. And they're going to be bringing up all these things. And you're going to be questioning this stuff. He said, Timothy, when that begins to happen, 
stir up that genuine faith that is in you. In other words, you know what you know. Don't be moved away from that by some kind of other doctrine. For those who have itching ears, don't listen to that stuff. You know what the real thing is. You know what genuine faith is. I heard an evangelist say, you may have heard him say too, this evangelist was in the area. And this evangelist said, you don't have any trouble. All you need is faith in God. Oh, really? I don't have any trouble. All I need is faith in God. You tell that to the parents who are standing out at the great side burning their child. You look them in the face and say, you don't have any trouble. All you need is faith in God. You say that to the man who just came out of the doctor's office with a copy of his MRI, and they said, you have stage four lung cancer. You look him in the eye, and you say, you don't have any trouble. All you need is faith in God. You tell the middle-aged woman who, who is entering her middle-aged years, and her husband has left her for a younger woman, you look her in the face and say, you don't have any trouble. All you need is faith in God. You go to that single mother who has a couple of kids because the dad didn't want to be a dad. He just wanted a one-night stand, and she's got the children to have to raise on her own. You look in her eyes and say, you don't have any trouble. All you need is faith in God. They're not going to believe a thing you have to tell them about this book. They got troubles. You got troubles. Well, let me put this together. Apparently, faith has nothing to do with troubles. In fact, James said, count it all joy when you ain't got no troubles. No. Count it all joy when you fall into why should you count it joy? Because faith is not dependent upon circumstance. Faith is not dependent upon situation. Faith does not falter. The trust we have in God, regardless of our circumstances, you can trust this word when you get that cancer diagnosis. You can trust this word when you're in the midst. Of grief. You can trust this word, whatever it is you've been facing or whatever it is you're going through, you can trust this word. And this word doesn't always say you're going to be all right. This word says, if you will believe in me, I will give you eternal life. That's what this word says. Well, well, this word says, that I, that I don't have this or that. Does not. Does not. You think David had any problems? You think Paul had any problems? <laughs> Paul had faith, didn't he? But they stoned him. They beat him. They put him in prison. <laughs> Paul, you ain't that much faith, man. <laughs> yeah, he did. Because he kept on keeping on because he knew that the belief and the trust that he had in the Word of God, regardless of what happened, he was going to go to heaven as God had promised him. In the world. That's faith, guys. That's faith. Faith is not a word that, that you can use in order to control the things you want to control. Well, you've got to speak to this and make it happen. If it hasn't been spoke to here, forget it. <laughs> and if this word says it will happen, it will happen. But the word has got to say it's going to happen. If the word doesn't say it's going to happen, I don't care what you say. I told you. I looked at that flat tire on that old truck. I said, I ain't going into that tire. His spirit was still flat. I, I could have knelt, I could have prayed, I could have done it. <clears throat> but it wasn't 
you know, I got the jack out. <laughs> jacked it up. He put the spider on it that it was able to be fixed. Had nothing to do with faith. Had nothing to do with faith. But I firmly believe that if that truck had fell on me and broke my neck, I would have ended up in heaven. Because that's what that word has promised me. It didn't promise me that I wouldn't get hurt. It didn't promise me that I'm not going to die. In fact, it promises me that I will. Jesus said, Jesus said, in this world you will have tribulations. Go ahead, speak to him all you want to, but you're going to have it. But I trust him enough that I don't care what may come into this life. I don't care what may happen in this world. <clears throat> My hope is built on this world. That when I'm born again, when I leave this body, I'll be with him in eternity. That's faith. Yep. If I didn't believe that, if I didn't believe that, I would lay this Bible down here on this pulpit, and I would walk out, and I wouldn't come back. I wouldn't get in front of you to teach it. I wouldn't get in front of you to preach it. I would just go do my own thing and say, let's just hope for the best. But I know better. Because the faith that is in me, that genuine faith, well, how do you get that? I'm glad you asked. I was hoping somebody would say, how do I get faith? <clears throat> Romans 12 and 3. For I say the grace given to me, Paul wrote, that everyone who is among you, check that comparison, through the grace given to me, to everyone who is among you, <clears throat> not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think. <clears throat> mm. You reckon there's people who think they have more faith than you do? <laughs> but to think soberly. Think soberly. Drunks don't think too good, do they? Think soberly. Yeah, that word means the same thing as soberly as God has dealt to each one a measure of faith. That's where it comes from. That's where it comes from. Where did that genuine faith in, in Eunice come from, Timothy? Where did that genuine faith that was in Lois, where did it come from, Timothy? <clears throat> God gave it to him. God gave it to him. So, so it's something that either God gives us or, or it's something that God don't give us. Is that, is, that the way, is that the way we see it? No. Romans 10, 16 and 17 says, and I'm jumping over while I go back to Jude, that they have not all obeyed the gospel, Paul said. For Isaiah says, Lord, who has believed our reports? Who believes that Jesus rose? Dead. Who believes that God is going to save Israel? Who believes these things, Isaiah said? Who has believed our report? So then, here you go. So then, believing the report that we have, faith comes by hearing. Oh, okay. So I got I gotta give it to you. I gotta speak it to you. If you don't hear me speaking it to you, you don't have it. Comma and hearing by the word of God. <laughs> you don't get faith from me. You don't get faith from my preaching. You don't get faith from my teaching. You get faith from the word of God. Amen. You believe what this word says. You trust in what this word says. Your hope is built upon what this word says. Doesn't matter what I say. I may say something wrong about this word. I may say things that, that I think is right when really it's not. It's not based on me. He said, Timothy, there are going to be those who are deep up in themselves, teachers, having engineers. 
They're going to want to hear what they want to hear. We're in a day and time. People are tired of hearing bad news. They're wanting it to get better. I want it to get better. You want it to get better. But listen, it is what it is, guys. We, we want it to get better. We want it to improve. But I can't make it happen. And you can't make it happen. But he is going to make it happen. Did you catch that? He is going to make it happen. It's not about me. It's him. And the way he gets there may not be the way I would want to go, but it's going to be the way it is. Faith is taking God in his word. Jude said <clears throat> in his letter, he said, The love of God was very diligent to write to you concerning our common salvation. Now, I like the fact that Jude has just told me, he has just said, I wanted to write this letter, and I wanted somehow to talk about that which you and I have in common, and that is the salvation that we have in Christ. I, I was diligent, diligent to write to you concerning that. What we see here is how the Holy Spirit works with people. Jude said, this is what I want to talk about. When I sit down and write this letter, this is what I want to talk about. But the Holy Spirit stepped in and he said, I found it necessary. I wanted to write this to you. I wanted to talk to you about being saved. I wanted to give you all the good news. I wanted to paint a rosy picture for you. But the Holy Spirit moved me to write to you exhorting you to contend earnestly for the faith which was once for all delivered to the saints. Jude said, I want to talk about being saved. I want to talk about our salvation. I wanted to write to you concerning the fact that we're all, we're all in Christ and we're all going to heaven. But he said, <clears throat> but the Holy Spirit wanted me to talk to you about earnestly contending for the faith which was once for all delivered to the world, to the saints. Listen, love my Catholic brothers, sisters, I love them. You don't have to die to be a saint. Now, Christian's a word we use, but the New Testament refers to those who were sanctified in Christ as saints. Those, those who believe in Christ, those who accept Christ, those who are born again, this is the New Testament called saints. Yeah. And he said it is the saints that God wanted me to write to, to exhort you, to encourage you, to instruct you, to contend for the genuine faith which was delivered to the saints. Don't be pulled off target. Don't be pulled off track because here's what happens. Here's what happens. When, when that word of faith is, is taught, when that word of faith says you're going to be prosperous or you're going to do this or you're going to do that, and you're, what happens if that don't happen? <coughs> then the belief and the trust that you have put in God goes out the window. Goes out the window. Solomon said, very wise man. I hate to say that about him because he had 300 wives and 900 concubines. Wisdom slips away from me when I read that. The <clears throat> Bible said he was wise, so I'll take the Bible's word. <clears throat> but Solomon said, don't lean on your own understanding, but lean on that which comes from God. That's what faith is, guys. Don't get, don't get blown off track. Don't get pushed off the word of God. Don't, don't let anybody try to convince you that you don't have faith if you're not able to do this or you're not able to do that. Or, listen, your faith, your faith is the trust you have in the word of God. That's your faith. You believe he's able to save you. You believe that he will save you. That's what faith is. And when you believe that, 
When, when you get that, <clears throat> listen, here's a simple analogy, and I'll close. You'll be glad. This fellow come from Italy, and it's in history. I don't remember his name. You can Google it. This guy actually come from Italy, old Martin King. This guy actually come from Italy, Foster Falls, and he was a he was a tightrope walker. And at Foster Falls, he stretched Foster Falls, <laughs> Niagara Falls. <laughs> Foster Falls would have been much of a leap. <laughs> Niagara Falls. I spent too much time on the river. Stretch a tightrope across Foster Falls. That's pretty high clear. He stretched a tightrope across Niagara Falls. <laughs> and he walked it blindfolded. He walked it blindfolded. He put a blindfold on and he walked the tightrope across, across that wire and he came back. And the people were watching and the people were cheering. And, and, he, and he took a, he, now this was added on to the thing. He took a wheel down. <coughs> Blindfolded and, and brought it back. And people cheered and they all. And he asked this one guy, he says, Do you think I can do that again? And the guy says, Yeah, yeah, I believe you can do it again. He said, Well, get into the wheelbarrow this time. <laughs> See, faith is more than just belief. <laughs> faith is not a leap. Faith is not a leap. Don't let them tell you, well, you got to make a leap of faith. Peter got out of that boat because he's seen Jesus. That was not a leap. That was not blind faith. He knew who Jesus was. He knew what Jesus was able to do. He got out of the boat because he saw Jesus. It wasn't a blind leap. It, it, it wasn't just, well, I hope this works. No. You know what you're doing. When you choose to put your faith Christ, and you choose to believe what the Word says about Him and about us and about salvation. Let me tell you, when you do that, you'll be able to say, as the Apostle Paul said, I am persuaded that neither present things nor things that are past nor death nor life nor principalities nor powers nor angels nor any other created being can separate me. We're not only believing that word, but Father, we're building upon that word. We're stirring up that genuine faith which is in us. So when these things come against us and we see all that's going on around us, yes, there are troubles. Yes, there are trials. <laughs> but you've overcome all that. You overcome all that. You're the one who saves us. And as long as we trust in you, what faith is. Not wavering, but holding to your promises in your word. Oh, we'll thank you and we'll praise you. We'll give you the glory for that day that we're with you where you are. In your name, Jesus, I say all these things by faith. And those who love the Lord would say, we love you, Jesus. God bless you. Amen and amen. You have a great day in the Lord.